Hi guys and welcome to this video today on conducting a regression analysis using raw data. Now if you haven't already watched the previous video I suggest you do so because that was a more in-depth look at how to write a report on a regression analysis. I went through it step by step with all the calculator displays and, and sort of showed you where to get all the information from. This video is more a repeat uh, but just look at the main screens and where you got the data from to write your report. All right, it's going to be a lot, lot quicker than our last video. And then we've got some VCE questions or some VCAR questions at the end. Now, it's really good to have you here at this moment in time. If you haven't already done so, can you do me a favor and click the subscribe button? Yes, uh, there's only about eight people watching at this moment in time. Most of those are my family and you would make nine and I would be stoked uh, just to know that you're watching. And if you can spread the word, that would be awesome too, all right? Uh, if you haven't already also discovered mathsguru.com, where uh, there is a link uh, being shown now, is there. The videos are all searchable, sortable, they're all by chapters, and there are notes that can download, etc., etc., etc. Okay? Have some fun looking at it, and it's free. So, conducting a regression analysis. As I said, in our last lesson, we had our uh, sort of shopping list, if you were, of steps that you wanted to take to be able to get the data you needed to write your regression analysis. Step number one was construct a scatter plot, then calculate the correlation coefficient, determine from that information the equation of the regression line, interpret those coefficient and the slope, use the coefficient of determination to indicate the predictive power, Use a regression line to make a prediction, calculate some residuals uh, to test our assumption of linearity, and then effectively write a report. So I'm not going to bring up my calculator today because I've got all the screenshots I need. But let's start with a question that has been very kindly provided by Cambridge. Thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to have access to their examples. They're brilliant examples, brilliant textbook. So the following data is provided and it says uh, to conduct a regression analysis for birth rate per thousand compared with life expectancy in years. Okay, so first thing we needed to do was work out which was the explanatory variable and which was the response variable and it was life expectancy. So now let's look at the screens we have now. So obviously the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fire up a spreadsheet uh, or a statistics sheet and list one I've changed to birth and list two I have made life. All right, so there's birth and there's life and I've just entered my values in bang, 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 bang. All right, so then it said draw a scatter plot just to have a look at the data. So I drew my scatter plot and yes, uh, what did we see? Well, the data seemed to be a negative, we'll say linear association, but is it strong? Is it moderate? Is it weak? Well, we can't work that out until we bring up our value of R. So what did I do? Well, obviously at that point then I did some sort of analysis. I did a regression analysis and a linear analysis, which brought up our most important values here. So remember our values of A, B, and R. There's also R squared there as well, but we know we can work out R squared from our value of R just by squaring it. So I normally write down on a separate piece of paper my value of A and B, and my value of R. So we now on those three screens can already look at writing sections of our report. Just those three screens, or in fact that one screen, tells us, all right, from our value of R, which is zero, a negative 0 0.807, rounding it to uh, three decimal places or three sig figs, that we now have a strong negative linear association. Okay, that's all from the negative 0 0.807, all right? Between life expectancy and birth, put the actual labels in. We've given our R value just so that we can actually back it up. And looking at our graph, there are no obvious outliers. So drawing this thing will allow us uh, the opportunity to see if there are any outliers. So that's from that screen. The equation of the least squares regression line is, right? We've got our value of A and B. We can substitute it in, and there we go. We've got life expectancy equals 105 minus 1.4446 times our birth rate. Now, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video, and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Mascara.com. Yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions, and there is more and more content and more stuff coming. 
as time allows. So head on over there, it's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mystery of maths. It is not as hard as you think, it is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much. Take care guys, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.